As NASA and NOAA announced this week, uh, 2021 was tied for the sixth hottest year on record, and climate data continues to show uh, Earth getting steadily hotter over time as we humans face those consequences of that warming. Uh, here to speak with me about climate change and what this past year spells for our future is NASA Earth System Scientist, Dr. Stephen Porson. Hi, Stephen, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, and thank you for having me on, on, on this today. Of course. Uh, now, as I mentioned, NASA and NOAA just released the global temperature data for 2021. What did this data show and what does it mean for us as humans living on planet Earth? Yeah, well, basically, the, the data released today have confirmed what's been happening over the past few years, and that is that the Earth is getting steadily hotter. Um, I think this year that passed was the sixth warmest on record. But equally and probably more importantly is that, that the hottest years that we've ever experienced have have all occurred in the past decade. So we're seeing a, a long-term change that the global temperature of Earth is increasing. Um, and what that means for us is basically that, um, you know, we're having to adapt to a, a new type of environment. Um, we're seeing uh, like warmer temperatures obviously everywhere, but we're seeing bigger extreme temperatures, bigger extreme precipitation events, um, fires are raging out of control in various places and coming unexpectedly. Um, we've got droughts, we, but equally we have, um, you know, regions which are very susceptible to flooding and they are getting um, even more precipitation and rainfall than normal. Absolutely. You mentioned a bit about the the consequences of climate change, I'll say, um, and, and this data and, and these results do continue to show um, increasingly extreme and increasing quantities of extreme events, you know, natural disasters, heat waves, fires, hurricanes, as you mentioned, um, and how, you know, in 2021, we're just continuing to see more and more extreme events. Um, could you speak a bit more uh, about this aspect and how we think this will evolve over time? How, you know, will this just continue to get worse as we see uh, things continue to warm? Right. Yes. And I think, um, of course, we've always got the natural variations to deal with. And that's a, that's a big part of the climate. So so if we look at the West Coast, what we saw this year was a major heat wave develop in the springtime. And then that um, kind of basically um, gave a, you know, very, very um, hot temperatures in the Pacific Northwest over the U.S. this year. Um, and that in turn led to, you know, a strengthening of the drought up there and, um, you know, health the health of people um, was affected. People were dying because of the heat. And finally, that culminated with major fires, especially in Canada um, up there. And so th this is a, you know, a very um, typical type of extreme event. And these are going to be happening more and more often, it seems. Um, and on the other extreme, um, it's the precipitation, the rainfall that's uh, increasing to an extent. Um, as storm systems develop, they would always do that, but as in a warming climate, there's just more energy from them, more, more warm water for them to pick up from the ocean surface. And so we're seeing much stronger flooding events. We've seen that on the East Coast and in the Southeast of the US over the past few years, um, like very, very strong hurricanes, which are probably intensified by um, climate change. And um, that, so th these are all major factors, major weather events, which are probably being intensified by the climate changes that we're seeing and that are affecting human lives in more, um, you know, more profoundly than they used to in the past. Absolutely. Uh, now, NASA and NOAA, are, you know, among organizations that have satellites in orbit studying Earth and its climate, how can we use space and how valuable of a resource is space as a vantage point to better understanding Earth's climate? Yeah, and that's a really great question for someone from NASA. Um, when you think about the, um, the, 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 the weather record that's been used for showing that the Earth is warming, that's really based on data from a few stations over the surface of the globe. And they are, you know, they're representative, but they're what we have. But um, a, a measurement on the surface of Earth is really only at one point. And so you can't see the entire globe in that sense. Uh, so what NASA does, and NOAA, NOAA too, with the operational satellites, um, we're able to look at the entire globe and monitor what's happening and how that's changing over time. So we've now got a, a satellite data record extending back to, you know, about 1980 um, with, you know, with commercial, with um, um, like uh, official um, satellites that are providing us information on temperature and moisture. And that fleet is maintained by NOAA and is always advancing. 
what NASA offers on top of NOAA is a much more sort of research orientated um, type of observation. So we're launching observations that are examining the mass of the oceans and how that's moving around. We are able to look at the ice in, at the high latitudes in the Arctic and Antarctic and monitor that, uh, how it's changing in characteristics or disappearing totally in, in cases. Um, we've got satellites up there that are able to look inside clouds. So we're able to figure out um, what's really happening, what processes are happening in clouds themselves. And then we're able to use that to um, affect, you know, to assess how the precipitation is occurring, um, how we're able to predict that better in weather forecasting, and also how all of these things are changing over time as we monitor it for more and more years from space. Absolutely. Now, when people talk about, you know, climate change and, and you know, annual data like this, uh, they often talk about the Paris Climate Agreement um, and kind of how, where we are in relation to the hopeful goal <laughs> to at least for the near future, stay under you know, 1.5 Celsius over industrial levels. Um, what does this past year's climate data mean for us and, and this goal? Yeah, so I mean, it really reaffirms the need for us to mitigate our emissions and uh, stop, you know, stop the amount of CO2 and other greenhouse gases increasing as fast as they have been. Um, it's a very, very slow process. We've seen it's taken, you, you know, we're talking about 150 years to, to warm up like like a, a little more than one degree, um, but we're getting perilously close to that 1.5 degrees where there's um, a lot of, um, you know, potential irreversible changes likely to happen. We're already seeing like in the polar regions, the temperatures are increasing much faster than over the temperate latitudes. Um, that means that ice is melting faster. Um, and with melting ice, that brings increased sea levels and it makes coastal communities much more susceptible to uh, flooding, especially during major weather events and that. So um, really what this year is telling us is that, yes, it's it's very important. We've got to um, stop emitting so much greenhouse gas. And um, over time, that will, you know, that can be partly taken out of the atmosphere by, by vegetation, by plants and trees and that. And um, there is a chance that we can stop this temperature rising as fast as it has been doing. But really, the only way to that is to stop emitting greenhouse gases. Absolutely. Um, so as you mentioned, you know, mitigation is more important than ever and continues to be so. Um, I think that when a lot of people at home hear this type of data and this this information, um, there's, you know, it can it can have a defeatist you know, people can feel apathetic, like, well, it's so bad. What could we even do about it? Um, you know, from your expertise, what concrete mitigation steps could make a uh, real impact and, and really start to make changes that we need to see? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm a scientist more in, in more sort of studying what happens because of this. But I think, you know, we do know there are technologies out there, we can use uh, natural sources for power. So solar, um, wind power should be bigger, um, co you know, components of our total power system. Um, and I think, you know, we really have to just think long term and motivate ourselves to want to do this. And who are we doing it for? You know, we're not necessarily doing that for ourselves right now. We're doing that for our children and our grandchildren who, who will be living on the earth much, much longer than we are. And they're going to be strongly affected by climate change um, in ways that we you know, we're probably getting some idea of how that could be, but we don't really know how it will be. And that's so I think we have to take that as a motivation for actually taking action. Definitely. Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you, Stephen, so much for speaking with me. Um, it's been it's been very enlightening. I really appreciate your time. OK, thank you, Chelsea. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Likewise. Have a good day.